I'm okay.
Everybody ready? Everybody ready? ready? Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for a short prayer and a salute to our flag? Almighty God, grant us the wisdom to make those decisions that are in the best interest of our residents. May the Heavenly Father of all of us bless those who have given the ultimate sacrifice in service to our nation, and may he watch over and protect our servicemen and women now guarding the gates of freedom. I will ask the cheerleaders, are there any cheerleaders here tonight? Are there any cheerleaders here tonight? Are there any cheerleaders here tonight? Okay. I will ask you to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, okay? On the count of three, one, two, three. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Uh, hey, that's my job. Okay, statement of publication. Mayor, take notice that this council meeting with the Mayor and Borough Council being held on the, uh, the 11th day of May 2015 has been advertised and posted in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Roll call. Councilpersons Buchanan. Here. Kilpatrick. Here. McGill. Here. Melendez. Here. Novak. Here. Rittenhouse. Here. Uh, are there any uh, meeting? Uh, any there minutes? are minutes, Mayor. Council President. Uh, Mayor, approval of a uh, prior minutes of the Mayor and Council. Motion to approve, subject to correction if necessary. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. Anything? Uh, next item, Terry. Mayor, we have a proclamation to read into record. Proclamation. <coughs> whereas May 11th through the 15th, 2015, the second full week in May has been designated as Women's Lung Health Week. And whereas every five minutes, a woman in the United States is told that she has lung cancer. And whereas lung cancer is the number one cancer killer of women in the United States. And whereas the lung cancer death rate in women had almost doubled over the past 37 years. And whereas advocacy and increased awareness will result in more and better treatment for women with lung cancer and other lung diseases and will ultimately save lives. And whereas, Lung Force is a, national, is a national movement led by the American Lung Association with the mission of making lung cancer history, uniting women to stand together in a, in a collective strength and determination to lead the fight against lung cancer and for lung health. Now, therefore, be it and is hereby resolved that I, Kennedy O'Brien, Mayor of the Borough of Cerville, to hereby proclaim May 11 to the 15, 2015, as Women's Health, uh, Lung Health Week in the Borough of Cerville. Is there a motion? I move that the mayor's proclamation be approved on roll call vote. Second. Roll call. Councilpersons Buchanan. Yes. Kilpatrick. Yes. McGill. Wholeheartedly. Melendez. Yes. Novak. Yes. Rittenhouse. Yes. At this time, I'm going to ask the uh, uh, governing body to come forward to the rail. Mayor. I'll, I'll, I'll reach it from you. You know, right after you are, are Dazzles and, oh, all right. But right now, we have a very, very good friends, and we're going to give them a proclamation first, okay? All right. Come on, we want to make you cry. Come on. Whereas the small business owners of our community work hard in the marketplace to provide quality goods and services, and this in turn evokes the confidence of the consumers who respond in a fashion which, keep, which keeps the economy healthy and vital. And whereas Cerebral Hardware and Supply, which was established in 1953, has been doing business as Rupp's Ace Hardware since 1980. It was a true mom and pop store run by John and Janet Rupp. Ray Rupp, son to John and Janet, joined the family business in 1960. Whereas in 1978, 
when his parents retired, that left Ray to run the family business. He joined Rupp's Hardware in 1980 and remained a member until uh, 2015 when the store was sold. Whereas during the interim, Ray married Andy Ash in 1991, daughter of Jerry Ash, who was the owner of Centra Hardware. Soon after... <laughs> we didn't get... Oh, okay. We did get our battery at Rupp's. Uh, it was just a test. Soon after, Andy joined Ray to help run the business and carry on the tradition of a mom and pop store, uh, and, and quite successfully, by the way. Business went up after Andy joined. The Rupp family attributes their 62 years of success to their dedicated customers. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and council of the borough of Cerville do hereby express its sincere thanks and appreciation to Ray and Andy Rupp for their contributions to the community and hereby recognize and commend them for their many years of dedicated service and goodwill to the borough of Cerebral and wish them well on their retirements. I On a, on a very personal note, Ray and Andy, I consider friends, not only do they own the local hardware store, but you know you're, you're living in a small town when it transcends the business and becomes personal. So through all the trials and tribulations that life you know, leads us through, Ray and Andy have always been there, and Ray, we have always tried to be there for you and Andy. And I'm going to pass the mic up and down the council and, and try to get you to get a little cry. Great, Andy. It's been wonderful. You are really one of the uh, cornerstones of Sayville. So now it's being rebuilt, but not with your expertise. God bless you. Take care of you. Ray, Andy, uh, my family's been used, used your store for many generations and uh, I want to thank you for all that all that you helped every resident in Cerebral and wish you the best of luck in your future. Thank you. Congratulations. God bless. Batteries again. Uh, it's um, great that you're retiring so young so you're gonna look like you're gonna have a, a really great retirement so good luck to you and God bless. This way. I don't want to make you cry. I these people, as Kennedy said, much more than just a hardware store. It wasn't a time I didn't go in there and I go in a lot, you know. And it was, how's the family, how's this, how's that? We all knew each other. And I knew it had to happen sooner or later. I wished it didn't happen now. I go past the store sometimes and I say to myself, gee, you know, I don't really need anything. Before I just stop in to say hello and always buy something, there was always something. And if you needed the most obscure little piece for something, you, you couldn't get it any place else, they had it, trust me. They knew what aisle it was in, and if I said, well, I already looked there, they'd bring me back there. And sure enough, I was wrong, they were right, they knew where everything is. I'm gonna, I miss you already terribly, and thank you for all your years of service. Our pleasure. It, it's your type of business and your type of personalities that just make Cerebral what it is today. My daughters actually learn to read using your signs. <laughs> so when I drive by and my six and my eight year old look and they're spelling out each letter and then they're looking on the side and they're like, that's where daddy goes for the keys. That's where daddy goes for the pro. And I go, yes. And my one daughter went in there and she was only four. And I'm pretty sure she rearranged at least one whole section. <laughs> and you smiled and you turned around and said, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And so now they go there and they think, we can rearrange here. We can work here. So it, it is going, it's, a, it's a loss not to see your smiling faces in there. But you've done amazing for this town. And your memory will always be there. Enjoy your re retirement. Ray and Andy, um, as a resident, thank you for everything. And also in my other role as president of the Cerebral Historical Society, many people don't realize that whenever we had a book come out, like the most recent Three years ago, um, Rupp's had a book signing. Whenever we had a new book, they had it there at the store so residents could see it. Um, they never made our meetings because the excuse was they had to do work because of deliveries <laughs> on a Thursday night. 
But now they're still in town, they're not leaving town, so I expect them to see at the Historical Society meetings. But thank you very much, not only from us, but from the Historical Society and all the residents of town. It's a bittersweet time of our lives, and uh, we had a good run for 62 years, and um, we've made friends with our customers. I've served three generations, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. The memories, it's just, I'll never forget. I could write a book on a lot of things, actually. <laughs> yeah, I could have a book signing. Yeah. But it's been wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful town. I've lived here all my life, and now Andy's uh, a, a servalite, and uh, we're going to be staying in town. And, and we thank you all so much for your friendship, your patronage. Um, it just has meant so much to us. And hopefully the new owner will do as well as we have. But it was a long run. We've gone through the ups and the downs, the good and the bad times, and we survived. And it's just been a pleasure all along. And thank you all so very much. We appreciate it. Just so everyone understands, we, we have a policy in the bar where we support. We're going to have to support a microphone company. Uh, we support local business. And one of the things when, when people ask me about it, I refer to Rupp's and I go, Rupp's Hardware has never, has employed more high school kids after school on Saturdays on their, fa on their vacations than you can shake a stick at. I said, I've never picked up a school program or any other program where the RUPS did not take an ad out in there. They are a magnificent corporate resident, magnificent people who live here. Ray and Andy did introduce me to the new owners. I think they're lovely people. They come highly recommended by Ray and Andy, and I think you're still working there in the transition for uh, quite some time. So please support. We have a new generation, a new group of people who are supporting Cerebral, supporting our kids. So Ray and Andy, there's only one thing to do, which is I'm going to appoint you both to the Historical Society tonight. Is there a second on that motion? All in favor? Well, there you go. Enjoy your retirement. Everyone, Ray and Andy Ruff. Once again, Ray and Andy Rupp, everyone. With that, I'm going to ask that the, uh, the Twinkles, Sparkles, and Dazzles come on up. Now remember, face the camera there. Right? Why don't we have the tall ones in the back and those challenged in the front? And are, are there parents involved here? Are there, is there adult leadership? Ricky, this, your daughter's in this? No, she's not. Okay. Who, who is the uh, lead adult here? Who? Jenny. Here. 
Uh, we just want to say thank you to Tom and the Cerebral AA and to everyone here for recognizing these girls tonight. We're very proud of all the work they did this year. And thank you to all our coaches, Dawn, Teresa, and Nikki, and Drew. And thank you to all our parents and our team mom, Michelle, who was amazing. And we're looking forward to a great next season. Yeah, well, Jen said everything. These girls are amazing. They range from five to 14. We had 40 something girls, so this is not even all of them. They did amazing, and we could not be more proud. So here we are, girls. We have um, a certificate of achievement for the. Would you like to hold them, please, sir? We have one for the 2015 16 Twinkles. Yeah. The Sparkles. And the Dazzles. Move them up, girls. Girls, I just remember to thank your parents because without mom and dad probably driving you to practice every day, you wouldn't be in these events and uh, competitions I know are very difficult and you have to get up and look very pretty with your bows every morning. So <laughs> I know all about it. So congratulations, congratulations coaches and the organization. Good luck. All right, who's, who, can you girls give us a demonstration of how you became such <laughs> prolific cheerleaders? Do you have a cheer? Because I'm awesome. All right, who's going to be the leader here? You're the le who's the leader to lead us in the cheer? to do this, so I'm going to give this to Jade. No. No. I do have anything. Okay. Okay. Nice. Well. No, 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 no. GHT fight W I N win go fight win All right ladies I think you're magnificent and you bring great pride to the borough of Cerebral. We're very proud of you. Thank you very much. Wave to the television camera above the door. You can wave to your friends at home. That's a camera. You're on television. Cheerleaders, Cheer, you can go home and do your homework. You can go. You can you can go to Rita's ice cream. You can do a lot of things, but you don't. You can stay here, but you don't have to.
vocal cheer they can do. Hey, can we have a couple people move to the other side so the building doesn't tip over? And the... I was going to say that the building doesn't tip over. <laughs> okay, with that, Terry, the next order of business. Mayor, we have a proc um, sorry, a pub the public hearing on the following ordinances. Ordinance number 285-15, an ordinance amending Chapter 9, Animal Control of the Revised General Ordinances of the Borough of Cerebral. Okay, I did ask the councilor to put an, am uh, uh, an amended uh, an amendment on there uh, per the uh, governing body's approval. Yeah, and, right. and mayor, it's uh, there's simply pull the mic closer. Mayor. There's simply going to be an addition that says that the mayor and council may review this ordinance every six months uh, in accordance with their discretion. That's not a substantial change. No. Okay. The reason I asked for it, it it's I we're giving we're giving uh, an entity police powers and uh, I just uh, until such time as as we no longer feel a six month review is necessary I'd like it reviewed every six months so with that I'm going to open the public portion for any questions or comments on this ordinance are there any questions or comments being no questions or comments uh, I'll entertain a motion council president McGill thank you mayor I move the public hearing be closed. The ordinance adopted on second and final reading and advertised according to law. Second. Roll call. Council Persons Buchanan. Yes. Kilpatrick. Yes. McGill. Yes. Melendez. Yes. Novak. Yes. Rittenhouse. Yes. Public hearing on ordinance number 286-15, an ordinance authorizing the acceptance of the traffic signal at the intersection of Main Street and Cerval Boulevard in the borough of Cerval County of Middlesex, state of New Jersey. At this time, we're going to open the public portion for questions or comments on this ordinance. Are there questions or comments? There being no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. Councilman Buchanan. I move the public uh, hearing be closed. The ordinance adopt on second and final reading and, and uh, advertise according to law. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Council Person Buchanan. Yes. Kilpatrick. Yes. McGill. Yes. Melendez. Yes. Novak. Yes. Rittenhouse. Yes. Next item of business, Terry. Mayor, under new business, I'd like to report having received the supplemental debt statement from CFO Wayne Kronowski as of May 11, 2015. Any action required? I need a motion to receive and file, Mayor. Motion to receive and file. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next item. Introduction of the following ordinance is or, uh, ordinance number 287-15, bond ordinance providing for the improvements to various parks in the borough of Cerval, New Jersey, appropriating $800,000 therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $760,000 bonds and notes of the borough for financing part of such appropriation. Councilwoman Novak? Yes, Mayor. I move the ordinance be approved on first Mayor, reading. if you could speak in the microphone. Yes. This mic cord's a little short for some reason. <laughs> I move the ordinance be approved on first reading and advertised according to law in a public hearing to be held on May 26th at prevailing time. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next item, Terry. Introduction of Ordinance 288-15, an ordinance supplementing and amending Ordinance Number 235-13, fixing the salaries of certain borough officials, officers, and employees for the years 2013, 14, 15, and 16. Mayor, this ordinance reflects changes that were, were made in accordance with the Department of Personnel title consolidation. Uh, Councilwoman Novak? Yes, I move that the ordinance be approved on first reading and advertised calling the law for a public hearing to be held on May 26th, the prevailing time. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next item, Introduction, Terry. Uh, introduction of Ordinance 289-15, an ordinance amending Chapter 7, traffic of the revised general ordinances of the Borough of Cerville to add on-street handicap parking at 29 Hart Street. Councilwoman, uh, Council President McGill. <coughs> Again, Mayor, I move the public hearing be closed and the consent agenda resolutions be approved on the ordinance. First reading. First reading. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. First reading, an ordinance amending Chapter 7, Traffic Company revised. To I'd like to make a motion to introduce. And advertise according and to advertise law. And advertise according to law. Thank you, sir. Public hearing on May 27th. Actually, yeah. May 26th. 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 Oh, wait a minute. It says no, 27th. 27th. It says 27th. It does say 27th. I'm going to clarify it according to our schedule. It is the 26th. Okay. Uh, is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 
Uh, at this time, I'm going to open the public portion for any questions or comments on consent agenda items. Are there any questions or comments? Being no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. Council uh, President McGill. I move the public hearing be closed and the consent agenda resolutions be approved on a roll call vote. Second. Roll call. Council Persons Buchanan. Yes. Kilpatrick. Yes. McGill. Yes. Melendez. Yes. Novak. Yes. Rittenhouse. Yes. Mayor, the resolution that we have listed to be read in full, we already read at the beginning of the meeting, but I would like to have a motion to receive and file. Is there a motion to receive and file? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you, Mayor. Next item, public portion. At this time, I'm going to open the public portion for questions or comments on any and all issues. Are there any questions or comments? For those that are new here, this is the part of the meeting where if you have a question for the governing body or complaint or a suggestion, this is the appropriate uh, time to come forward. There being no, no uh, questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. I move the public portion be closed. Second. Roll call. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Take a motion to adjourn the uh, council meeting portion. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Where is the... I have a right in here. Okay. Take just a few minute break. I have to run to the ladies' room. Go ahead. We're going to take a couple minute break between the two meetings. Oh, yeah, I know. Thank you. that up too so nobody understands it. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Would everyone please stand for a salute to the flag? <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with the liberty and justice for all. Okay. 
Terry's statement of publication. Mayor, take notice that this agenda meeting of the Mayor and Borough Council being held on the 11th day of May 2015 has been advertised and posted in accordance with Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975. Roll call. Council Persons Buchanan. Here. Kilpatrick. Here. McGill. Here. Melendez. Here. Novak. Here. Rittenhouse. Here. Okay, all business. Um, are there any questions or comments on Ordinance 287-15? Here, these are all of the ordinances that were just introduced at the council meeting and that will be coming up for public hearing at uh, on May 26th. I understand. Are there any questions or comments on 287-15 uh, and 288-15? New, uh, well, let me go right to committee reports. Administration and Finance, Councilwoman Novak. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, uh, Yes, uh, the minutes... I know, I get it. It's difficult. I got it. When you sh no, yours is just as short. Okay. Uh, I move that the following minutes and reports be received and filed. Board of Education minutes of April 21st. Is there a second? Also, second. Also received uh, bingo and raffle applications for AARP uh, on June 16th at Camellio's Whiskers Rescue to conduct a Tricky tray on premises at VFW post 4699 on September 18th. And Animal Rescue Force to conduct an off premises 50 50 on <coughs> October 24th at Sayerbrook Animal Hospital. Any objection? Anything else, Councilwoman? Um, no, Mayor, just uh, we had the uh, public hearing on the budget uh, at the last meeting. Uh, I'm kind of surprised uh, nobody even asked a question. Usually we get a few questions anyway. Uh, the budget has been approved. We will be now over the next few meetings working to start all the projects that we were allotted for in the budget. And hopefully, you know, you'll start to see a lot of the things that we approved last year, you're actually going to see getting done this year. And what we're going, what we have in the budget this year, a lot of it as far as works, public work stuff, you won't see until uh, next year. But we're moving along, and that's our forward moving council up here. Thank you. Okay, planning and zoning, Councilman Buchanan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, letter A, receive and file for the uh, notice to adjacent property owners. Same. Um, letter B, also receive and file, uh, which was the memorialized minutes of the planning board Second. for uh, Lakeview Drive and Luxury Point of Cerebral. Any, uh, is Other there a that, second? Second. Anything else, Councilman? Progress. Okay, uh, Public Works, Councilwoman Kilpatrick. Uh, no committee reports at this time. Um, being that um, Councilwoman uh, Novak mentioned that our budget was approved and we are moving forward with our projects for this year, I also think we need to keep in mind that we need to start thinking about what we want to do for the following year. With that being said, um, we had a beautiful weekend. Um, over the weekend, a little tiny bit of rain, and the weekend prior to that, I was over in a couple of the parks here in Saraville. And one of the things that I would like to investigate and start looking at for the future is the possibility of removing some of the mulch, um, the wood mulch fibers that we have in the parks right now. My own daughter came home with three ticks, mm -hmm. not this past week, but the week before, um, over on Burks Park. I literally had to pull two out of her hair, one off of her stomach. And when you think about mulch, and I go around to other uh, parks and communities and even over to the Center for Lifelong Learning, the rubber turf that you have, and I've done a lot of research on this, eliminates um, a lot of disease that might be harbored in there from animals that are using that as a public facility for the bathroom. You have insects, you have ticks, you have other types of bugs, cuts, scrapes, and bruises, and it's a lot easier on the knees. Um, so moving forward, I hope that I can work with uh, Councilman Melendez to maybe take a look at some of the recreation things that we have on the, the docket for next time and see about maybe um, upgrading those facilities. That way parents don't have to start taking off those shoes and finding God only knows what. Okay. You got my vote. You got my <laughs> So um, other than that, progress. Thank you. Recreation, Councilman Melendez. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a couple of items from the Recreation Department. Um, registration is still open for this year's summer programs. Um, they're filling up fast, so uh, kindly please visit cerebralrec.com to <coughs> register. This Saturday is the Fishing Derby. It starts at 8.30 a.m. at Kennedy Park. Rain or shine, free to all Sable residents up to 15 years of age. 
Um, we also have a flea market on Saturday, June 6th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. Also at Kennedy Park. Um, again, you can visit the website to sign up for that. There are some Yankee tickets available. Um, you can, uh, again, the website to visit for that. We're also doing movies in the park in Kennedy Park on June 13th, 9.15 p.m., Garden of Galaxy. July 11th at 9.15, um, Blended, a movie called Blended. And August 29th, 8 p.m., um, Monster University. Um, from the IT side of the business today, uh, we did approve the, the uh, security camera upgrade for the police, so that's a very great milestone. Um, thank you for Councilman McGill for, uh, as public safety, pushing me for safety. So uh, he was actually behind the scenes on a lot of that. So um, I'm very proud of that. We look forward to that being implemented. And the next project we're going to be looking at is fixing these microphones and cameras and, and such. So we're going to be putting some RFPs together to get that going. So that will be done this year, too. Um, everything else, I think um, we're OK to discuss. So progress. Thank you. Water and Sewer, Councilman Rittenhouse. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, no <laughs> committee reports at this time. I would like to thank the Tuesday Club and the Honor Guard. I was at their uh, meeting where uh, the Honor Guard gave a program on poppies, explaining the different types of poppies that were there, and the seniors seemed to enjoy it. And it's always a pleasure when the, uh, when the Honor Guard is out. Rich Kosmuski gave uh, the history of, of poppies. Um, also, I'd like to ask um, the council, I notice on his he has an update for the Main Street Bypass. We do have a couple of the members here, and uh, count, uh, Councilor, if you could uh, address that, and, Mr. Yeah. and President McGill, you had wanted to address some of the people from the uh, yeah, I bypass. Think, well, it was just in the purpose of trying to get a little direction uh, and authorization to prepare for the resolution, you know, at, continuing to ask for advice and consent um, from the council, but uh, at the same time, I think that uh, there was a uh, concern regarding incurring any more f further expenses. I think there was a, um, a concern or a consent to uh, ask and have our, have the members uh, provide the mayor and council with their advice and their and their experience. Um, I just was looking for a little direction. That's all I was looking for. Direction for what? For, to prepare the resolution that y'all asked me to do. You, you understand this was um, a committee that I put together as an advisory group to myself. The only thing was at the last meeting, uh, they were not permitted to use any borough professionals anymore. Uh, other than that, the committee, um, in my, it's my full intention to have them continue to meet and, and uh, because they are the affected homeowners. Yeah, no, and I and I don't. I'm just looking for a little direction. I don't disagree with you on that. I think that everyone wanted their uh, their advice and their consent and their experience. I just wanted to make sure that I, um, if I was authorized to to prepare the resolution in accordance with your discussions. Is is that is anyone making a motion to authorize that? What are we authorizing right now? It's just the. I was looking for a little directions. Uh, uh, Art had asked uh, regarding my my uh, uh, item uh, uh, item agenda regarding the uh, Main Street bypass. And I think at the last meeting there was a direction that um, the committee continue to meet and provide uh, their advice and their consent regarding the Main Street bypass. But there was also at the same time a request that the uh, the expenses uh, after eight years be uh, reduced and or eliminated. So I just want to make sure that. That yeah. authorization is still warranted. I have no problem with the uh, bypass committee continuing. I just don't see the. Uh, I just can't wrap my arms around the professionals going to these meetings and being paid for them. I think we should eliminate that. This is an advisory committee. I agree. We've we've had uh, this has been a long process. Um, the committee has had involvement and will continue to have involvement um, again, but. We're spending money um, on things that aren't necessary, uh, necessarily required. Uh, this council and, and the planning board have the authority to make those decisions, and, and um, we have that ability with the engineer here um, to make decisions that, uh, that will 
impact that area for the benefit. So I, I agree with Councilman McGill in that we should, uh, you know, eliminate that expenditure. Well, let's let's take a take a uh, roll call vote on who would like to eliminate um, providing uh, the borough professionals to the Main Street Bypass Committee. Roll call, Terry. It, it's non-binding. It's a, it's a straw vote. The council at any time can cannot approve uh, a borough professional uh, the, uh, <coughs> to attend. But I, I, I want to see who 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 does not want to send uh, borough professionals to this committee. If there's a majority, please take a roll call. Councilpersons Buchanan. Yes. Kilpatrick. Yes. Melendez. Yes. Novak. Yes, with uh, with comment. I would like uh, to make sure that when Jay does give any kind of reports up here, that a copy of his report be forwarded to the Main Street Committee. That way, they'll still be getting all the reports. We just won't be paying Jay to be at their meeting to say the same things he's saying here. Thank you. McGill. Yes. Rittenhouse. No. All right, so is, is it my understanding, I'm confused now because I know President McGill, you said you wanted to disband that committee, even though you couldn't because it's a mayor's advisory. So now you're in favor of having that committee? Is that my understanding? Well, if the mayor is, if the mayor is in charge and I can't disband it, why right, would I That's be not what it? you said at the last meeting. No, that's with what the I'm rest saying. That's what I'm saying now. Okay. Now that the mayor has let us know that we just did a straw vote, and the majority feels that we should disband, not to spend it. No. No. Well, we're not, talking no about professionals. professional service. No professionals. All right. So now, okay. And, and, and I might add, we, we, we have Section 1 done. The town is getting more and more crowded. What we're looking for is relief. We have Section 1 done. I would love to see a shovel in the ground soon. Nobody's objected to that. I, I know that, but we still have the traffic on Washington and Maine. It's do you think the away. Main Street Bypass Committee is the cause of this traffic? No, I don't think it's the Main Street. No, as I said no, last we, time. We never even said that. Mayor, as I said last time, this was brought up by a, a Republican candidate back eight years ago uh, to, to put a monkey wrench in this into the uh, Main Street Bypass. Um, so there was obstacles and, and, and everything else in, in front of a project that can get done and we were only allotted a certain amount of money and we've spent two million dollars of that money already and some of it has gone to professionals for the Main Street Bypass Committee which Dan I think you're I think you're incredibly wrong on this I don't uh, of that two million dollars no, no, no. I, I didn't say I, all of it was for uh, engineering Dan I, I think know. it's I think it's it's so such small money oh, and, and essentially what the, you're saying to the homeowners is they have no professional advice to, in the, for the direction. You're, you're incorrect, Mayor. What I'm you're, saying is phase saying one, it. which is affecting those residents right off the bat, have, they had input. How much of the $2 million do you think has gone to the questions that the area residents had from the Main Street Bypass I know committee? that $1.7 to $1.8 million was used already at that money. Do you think that was the Main Street Bypass that used $1.7 million? I, I think that the Republican Council candidate back in 2007 started this whole thing that started using up the money. Yes. You do? I do. I think we should have an audit. I mean, $1.7 million is a lot of money for an advisory committee. There's a lot of people making a lot of money these days. I don't think they're making it on the bypass committee. The, the money no. spent on the professionals over the last three years totaled about not quite $3,000, which is less than three-tenths of 1% of that total. And what about the five years before that? I didn't get that figure because I wanted to stop. Let's go back. I'll, I'll, stop I'll, I'll, stop I'll find, I think Guys, we what should are we find out, out here? how, no, no, how I mean, much of this $1.7 million. Were well, we just doing a straw poll? Yes. yes. Okay, but, let's but finish, this is let's the, finish the straw poll, uh, Mary. Council President, we did finish it. This is the agenda portion where we... We discuss things, it. so we are discussing this. <clears throat> it's not it's not the portion where we take action. So I think I think it's important that uh, that we find out. Uh, we'll have Wayne uh, give us the figures of, of how much professional how much money has been expended on professional fees 
for the Main Street Committee. Well, I have just one question, and, and Jay can probably answer this for me. Jay, with, with the uh, bypass committee, can someone tell me when we would actually start work? Unfortunately, I can't because we're waiting on outside agency approvals that the, I right. really can't predict what okay. that time frame is. Okay. Which has nothing to do with the bypass committee. Okay. Somehow you That's guys the think Council. the bypass committee uh, will pull a trigger and this project will go forward. They're, they're merely an a, a, a committee of the residents that live on the Main Street corridor who are affected by it, and it was created to give them input over over their the and I have no future of no their neighborhoods. I have no problem with that. And they're going to continue that. Are we continuing I, I think to it will be difficult without without no, no, working no, no. with uh, a, a professional. Yeah. Mayor, may I? Please. I go mean, ahead. Uh, I don't know what went on back in 2007. Danny <laughs> would have more knowledge of that than me. But uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, the, this is my fourth year up here this time, and I've only had uh, the Main Street Committee give one report, and it was quite an excellent report. It seems as though they want everything to go ahead as quickly as possible, <coughs> and they, I think it's fine if they want to still meet. I really give anybody credit in this town that wants to. I was on a recycling commission, and we never had a quorum for four years, so I really give Main Street Committee, you know, uh, you know, kudos for that. But at this point, I mean, even if it's five cents to have Jay go to their meetings, if there's something to report that the Main Street Committee should be aware of, as soon as Jay knows that, we get a report, and I want to make sure that Main Street Committee gets a copy of it. I don't think it's necessary to have a, an engineer sitting there. Uh, just, just one more question. Jay, do you... Uh what are your feelings? Do you feel you're needed at these meetings? No, oh, don't put him on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I serve at the pleasure of the council. If you want right. to attend, I'll attend. Good one, Jay. I, I, <laughs> well, <laughs> let's put it this way. Put Jay, Jay it, it, do, do we need the permission of the, of the bypass committee to put the shovel in the ground to build this project? That would be a council decision. Yeah. Yes, so Send it to it, us. It, 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 it's, it's the decision of the governing body, Send not it to the us. Main let's Street uh, Committee. Let's get it going. I really think it's very insulting to them. And Jay, how many, how many changes were made from the original plan to the, for phase one? Well, if you recall the history, in 2009, the permit application was submitted. In 2010, it was denied by the state. Sure. There was a three-year period where not much happened because the borough had appealed that decision. Right. And eventually, we had meetings with the state, and they said, you're in, in your best interest, rather than appeal it, then file a new application. That was done in 2013. It was approved in 2014. So there's a history of what it took to get those DEP permits in place. Now that you have those, you can file for your other permits. MCUA and Army Corps are the two that are still outstanding, and, and we're working with them trying to resolve their issues. Now, but what I'm saying is the original plan that the planning board approved uh, years ago on the master plan, how, how much has that changed from uh, with, with uh, the, the recommendations of the committee? I think the biggest recommendation that the committee made that where the change took place was the intersection of Crossman Road and the Main Street Bypass. And this council wants to move forward with that and is moving forward with that, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay. So, the, so I mean, the, com the committee made their recommendation and we are going along with it, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm not really sure what the problem is here, Mayor. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all baffled about oh, this whole yeah, let, me, baffled. let me just get this straight. Last meeting, the consensus of the council was that they were going to disband the bycast pass committee, instructed me to invite them here to say, thank you, you're done, we don't need your work anymore. Now I'm hearing that you want them to continue their work. Correct. You want them to continue their work, but we're not going to pay to have professional services go there. Is that correct? Yes. We want them to continue their work. But without, without the advice. Without professional without. services. Well, that's again, that's uh, fine. <coughs> we want to continue Thank their input. I, mean, I just want to make sure because you had me tell them they're disbanded, and now you're saying they're not disbanded. That's all. That's, I just want clarification. You know, people get confused when they're told one thing and then they're told another. 
I don't think that's what Mary said, though, by the time we, and I think, is that why, yeah, think Mr. That's DuPont, that's why you wanted it's the on, It's on tape of what President McGill and what Councilman Buchanan said. But if I don't like, know I'll if that's what we back. ended up moving forward. Yes, it was. Though, because. And that's why the councilor has the item on the agenda so he could get the direction on how to do it. Were you asking for clarification on that resolution? Missed, because you were, con I I missed, that's I what missed, I got I, from it. I want. I wanted authorization to prepare the clarification and resolution. That's all I'm, I'm asking for. That's why it's on my agenda, because well, typically I've, it's not on my agenda. I've got a question to the attorney. Please, please, speak, in the mic please speak in the microphones. Okay. Um, Mike, um, being there is no disbanding, is this even something that needs a resolution? Just We just don't authorize the, uh, the engineer to go there? Yeah, is you that could you could, you could do that. I, it was just some something that had to be discussed so that, because there was obviously an intention uh, to reduce the expenses and, and move forward with the recommendation of the, um, of the Main Street bypass, but at the same time, <coughs> there was some discussion uh, of re meeting uh, the Main Street bypass, and the mayor had indicated it was his committee. So I put it, I asked Terry to put it on my, my agenda for discussion. Um, <coughs> That's the reason why I put it on. So you, you, were, you were even a little confused as to where we left it. I uh, guess we weren't very concise. I was, I was just, again, as I said, looking for some direction and clarification. That's we got to slow the meetings down a little bit. Okay, just, to, just for purposes of clarification, when this started, uh, th there were many residents who were upset. So I had a committee put together of the people that lived in the area that would be affected by the bypass road. And it was their job to review it, to speak with the engineers, to speak with everyone involved when it, and, and to form a consensus and to have input into what was happening in their neighborhoods. The charge I gave them was we have a traffic problem and we're looking for a solution. And they have been extraordinarily diligent now, there has been times when there have been council people that lived there and, uh, in that neighborhood and were adamantly opposed to the bypass road. Art Rittenhouse lives in that area. He is chairing the committee. Th at no time did the committee ever have any jurisdiction uh, over the project as to whether or not it could proceed or not. It was essentially a group of, of area residents and it had a lot to do with, A, it started out, what is the solution for this traffic problem on Main Street? How are we gonna solve this? And then moving forward, once the, the road was accepted by the, the area residents, what the intersecting cross streets would be. Um, and, uh, you know, by, by saying to them that we're going to deny you uh, the borough, the use of the borough engineer, it's kind of like putting them in a dark room with, uh, without, uh, without any light and asking them to draw a map. It just is, it's kind of silly, but maybe that's the point of, of the exercise. Also, in the, in the existence of the bypass committee and the expenditures of $1.7 million, one has nothing to do with the other. They have nothing to do with the expenditure of $1.7 million. That was on, on engineering fees and permitting fees. So the state is difficult because the road does cross several wetlands. And um, it was a question of applying and reapplying and modifying the application. Um, I commend the bypass committee. They have done extraordinary work. They're very dedicated. They're very concerned about where they live and, and how it will impact them. At the same time, looking to provide the traffic solution. So I am a, I think it's wrong headed to, to you know, handicap them like this. And, and the, the second thing, you know, I just want to reiterate it once again. The bypass committee has never had the authority to say yes or no to the bypass pro uh, project. It has always rested with the governing body. And where this confusion came in, I don't know. And why it continues to cause confusion here uh, at the governing body level, 
is, is baffling to me. The, the, the governing body makes these decisions, and that's, that's the gist of the whole thing. And I will ask Wayne to find out how much has been spent by the bypass committee. I know they've had area, uh, I know they've had the O'Neill group in there. I know they've had advice from, uh, they've had uh, weigh-ins from the borough attorney over the years as to what can and cannot be done. I know they've had Sergeant Bartolinski who's in charge of traffic and is uh, our, our resident expert on traffic laws. Um, and, and they've done some great work with, with the full cooperation of the borough. It's truly a shame <coughs> to see that ending in such a, uh, in such a manner as, as it's ending tonight. All right, next item, uh, next item uh, Arthur. That's, that's all I have right now, progress. All right, there. public safety, council president. Thank you, Mayor. Item A, request for a coin toss at the intersection of Washington and Ernston Roads from 10 to 2 p.m. Received from Whiskers <coughs> Rescue on November 14th and 15th, 2015. Any objections? Next item. Request for approval on the following firefighter application. Paul Conlon as a full member of Sable Engine Company. Application was accepted at their March 26th, 2015 meeting. Any objection? Next item. Request to travel received from Sable Engine Company number one to sell the raffle tickets at the open house event at Sport Honda, a touch in New Jersey, on May 30th, 2015. Any objection? Anything else, Council uh, President? Just a couple of comments, Mayor, uh, on Public Works. Uh, just wanted to thank everyone at Public Works uh, on worked on Connie Road over the weekend. We had a problem with the, uh, the drainage there. That cistern was totally uh, blocked, and thanks to uh, Mr. Cornell and people from Public Works, it's all been cleaned out. And I was just going to ask uh, uh, Councilman Melendez, uh, where do we stand with the security cameras possibly going into the senior center? Is that a question for me? Yeah. Um, they did do a, a site survey of the property. I think you were involved, Mr. Lopatriello. And um, when we bring these guys on board, that'll be the, the next step is to link up the security center for senior center. Yeah, just one more thing. Uh, ladies and gentlemen from the, uh, the bypass committee, um, rather than shade this in a good guy, bad guy situation here, we all appreciate what you are doing. Not what you have done, but what you were doing. It's that simple. What we're looking for is to move forward. That's all. That's it. Thank you. Anything else, Council President? Progress. Okay. Borough Administrator's report. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the borough Clerk is requesting authorization to appoint Enza Zepzinos as a permanent part-time clerk type is 2, effective May 27th, 2015. Any objection? Next item. Borough Clerk is requesting authorization for Muni Code to perform a legal analysis review and you date our municipal code as necessary at a fee not to exceed $5,800 plus $150 for a teleconference when necessary. Any objection? Next item. Authorization for the <coughs> CDBG coordinator to submit an application for the 2015 CDBG funds to HUD for the following projects, Senior Center window replacement of $30,000 and the Quaid Street reconstruction, $181,308. Next item. Authorization to execute a host agency agreement with Easter Seals of New Jersey <coughs> for the continuation of the C Senior Community Service Employment Program for the period of July 2015 through June 2016. Next item. Um, Mayor, under planning and zoning, I just want to add something. We had talked about the, as an update, um, 124 Buchanan, which we went out for uh, bids to knock down the house. Uh, we only got one bid in, which was 19,900. We didn't go out for bid, that wasn't bid. We went out for quotes. No, for quotes, excuse me. Yeah. We only got one quote that came in. One responded. One responded. Uh, I just want to make sure the council is okay with that expenditure. We think it's a little bit higher than what we thought it may have been, but it's in the, it's in the range. So we just want to make sure to put it on the next uh, on the agenda next time. Any objection? No, um, Dan, uh, um, through Mike, um, <coughs> can we put a lien on the property for this work that we're doing? Yes. 
And what would be the process for that? You, you, a, you're going to have to file a complaint uh, requesting the uh, court to authorize the uh, issuance of the uh, of the lien. We do that now, or do we wait until all the expenditures are out? We wait till the expenditures, because I'm going to have to have uh, calculation of damages on it. Okay. Okay. Next item, Dan. Mayor, there's also been some questions recently about the maintenance of the properties affected by the Blue Acres buyout. I think we need to have a discussion, but I just want to make sure I handed out this evening uh, to everybody, which was a mem memorandum of understanding between the state and the borough of Cerville. And in number seven, it specifically says the parties here to agree that the properties acquired and cleared shall remain in their natural state as open space, but that the municipality may utilize them for passive recreational purposes, not inconsistent with the purposes of the state acquisition program and any federal or state funding limitations imposed. We know there's a lot of houses that have come down on Weber. We know there's more coming down. We also know in the Albridge section there's houses coming down. Calls have been coming in from the residents, some residents that have decided to stay in these areas, that they want their uh, adjacent property to them, which is the land that has been knocked, the land that is left after the building has been knocked down, to be basically manicured by the uh, by public works. And I was under the understanding, I think, as council was, and I just want to get council's opinion on this, that we are going to leave this in its natural state and we're not going to use any of our funds in order to uh, uh, take care of the property. And, um, Council, do you have any problem with that? No, that's, I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's pretty specific. It, you know, it says passive recreational purposes and or uh, their natural state. So I think that's, that's what the contract uh, and what's the agreement uh, for Blue Acres or Blue Acres is specifically stated. Any comment? Any objection? Just that when, when this originally happened, I talked to somebody from FEMA and I asked them and they said that their preferred, uh, what they prefer to have done is that it remains in its natural state uh, with vegetation growing on it, it will uh, actually absorb water better and be you know, much better if, you know, to take care of any water problems. Okay, next item, Dan. Uh, authorization to extend the contract for annual maintenance and repair of borough elevators with standard elevator for one additional and final year with no increase in price. Any objection? Next o Authorization item. to appoint Thomas R. Forbanek from temporary to permanent status as a laborer in the Department of Public Works, effective May 27, 2015. Any objection? Next item. Request for authorization for the Board of Education to use the portable stage for the graduation ceremony. I just want to make an amendment to this. They need it there on June 22nd. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I have, okay, I don't have the other. Through June 24th. Any objection? Next item. Request for a special event permit received from the several EMS to hold an open house. Uh, wet down on May 23rd, 2015. Any objection? Would you do the CFO's report? Sure, please? Mayor. Thank you. Bond ordinances for introduction at our May 26th meeting. Various improvements for $1.4 million and various equipment and uh, vehicles and equipment for $2,300,000. In your packet, you will see the details. Any questions, any comments? Uh, Jay Carnell, your report. Uh, thank you, Mayor. First item, no further actions necessary. You awarded a contract under the first part of the evening. That's for the 2015 roof replacement project. Second item, major drive waterfront improvements. That's the bulkhead improvements on uh, major drive. We received bids for that project. The money is being appropriated in the bond ordinance that's going to be heard at your next meeting. So if that bond ordinance is approved, we'd ask that you have a resolution awarding that contract. And finally, Mayor, at the last meeting, you asked us to review a bond release request for Highview Homes. Uh, they were looking for a cash bond return. They did post approximately $2 million letter of credit, so that money can be returned. So we'd ask that you have a resolution at your next meeting. Okay. That's Anything it. else? You. That's it. Thank you. That's it. Uh, Borough Attorney, any, any, uh, any other report? No, sir. Okay. This time, I'm going to open the public portion for any questions or comments on any and all issues. Good evening. My name is Shirley Reed, and I am part of the Main Street Bypass Committee. Shirley, would you give me your street, please? Yes, 14 Wilbur Terrace in Cervo. Okay. okay. Um, I'm part of that committee since 2011, and I served as uh, the secretary 
and took very copious notes. So f if anyone is interested in the cost and so forth, you might want to look back. It's a big binder of, of permits and so forth. Um, I'd like to uh, comment on something. I'm, I'm a former educator. I taught science for 35 years at East Brunswick High School. And in my science classroom, I had to give my kids some facts before they could solve a problem dealing with anatomy and physiology or forensic science or whatever I might have been teaching. And for us to be blind, blind to, um, let's say, the Acapulco Pond, which I knew nothing about if it wasn't for Jay. There's a lot of things that you have to know before you're going to make a recommendation with regards to uh, the, the Main Street Bypass. And we needed to know. I needed to know. I didn't know, you know, what was behind me or whatever. I live on Wilbur Terrace, and it's horrendous to get out of that street. You know, right, if you know where Wilbur Terrace is, you know, right, right there where the cars are zooming down. It's extremely important to have someone from the borough to educate us. I found it extremely important that I had, you know, Sergeant Bartlinski come, you know, and, and the, you know, chief of police, because Sergeant Bartlinski, he was no one who, he knows the rules, okay? And for us to have a committee and for you to tell us, okay, make some recommendations without professionals, that's absurd. And I take it you know, as kind of an insult when it was like, well, the money was spent, believe me. I, I didn't spend any money. I took a lot of notes, spent a lot of time. The notes are, Paul has them at this point. I gave up my position as secretary because of the amount of notes and so forth that you had to take. I think maybe the council come to one of our meetings before you make the decision as to whether or not we need to find out what exactly is happening. You know, like as I said, I was a teacher. I taught, you know, life sciences. I, you know, I, kids go to college and so forth. I, I just think that it's absurd that we do not have, at least at some point, direction. And when Jay was there, he certainly educated us. Okay, without weighing it one way or the other. He, I, I had questions upon questions. I learned more about wetlands. I learned more about culverts. I learned more about what could happen. As far as phase one, I'm, I'm you know, yeah, okay, phase one is happening. Phase two, you know, permit, per permit. And you know what held us up? The state of New Jersey. Because we were trying to get information back from them and it was like, oh, this person's not in, or no. It, I, I just cannot believe the red tape. So once again, if you want to know how much money was spent, okay, look at the notes. I would tell my students that. Before you make a decision on something, look at your notes. I invite you to come to our meeting. Okay, we take the time out to come to these things, and believe me, you know, when when uh, I was approached, you know, would you be interested in being on a committee? I said, oh, you got to be kidding me. Try to get out of my street. Try to get out of my street. So please, council, come to our next meeting. Okay? And to say, okay, Jay can just send us the notes. Well, how am I going to ask Jay a question on notes that I'm not sure of because I'm not an engineer? I, I would like to know that. Thank you, Shirley. I need you to identify yourself for the record. Paul Compagna, Equizda Court, Sarahville, New Jersey. So, hello everyone again. Um, you know, last time I was before this council, um, I gave a presentation, I gave you all available options, and I gave you recommendations. Uh, this council took, we only had three recommendations, and yet this council took all three of our recommendations and proceeded with them to vote on them, and they thought they were good ideas. I find out, you know, two weeks later that now our job is done. Um, and I find it that, you know, the, the first phase, okay, that's close to being done. However, the second phase is the most difficult part of the entire project, and phase three will not be an easy part either, considering the amount of work that's going down by, by O'Neill. Um, so I'm a little confused on that. If our recommendations are so great, why two weeks later is our job officially done when that is only a third of the project? Um, 
the second thing I'd like to point out is, is, is talk about money for Jay. Uh, I assume that you guys know the dollar amount that has been spent this year to date for Jay to be able to make those kind of comments? They think it's $1.7 million. Yeah, $1.7 million. No, actually, Matt, that was the entire expenditure so far. Okay. That's not just for Jay for the meeting. Okay, so but to have Jay at these meetings, do you know the dollar amount for this year that has been spent on Jay Cornell being at those meetings? I do. I don't have the number in front of me, but I have those numbers. You know that it's under $1,000, right? You know that every house along the line of where this bypass road is could could lose ten times that value and home and home property value. Every house, and yet here we are arguing about having the township engineer at meetings that have cost under a thousand dollars year to date. And mind you, we're going on vacation. We take that summer off, so the next meeting after this meeting probably won't be for another month or two. So nine hundred dollars, guys. That's what we're here talking about today, about having a township engineer who's going to give us facts, give us detailed information, who, do, who knows this town and knows about the scope of what has to happen better than anyone. So without the township engineer, we do not think we can give recommendations because those would not be wise recommendations. So I leave it with you to decide whether or not you would like the township engineer to continue at these meetings considering we're only a third of the way through the project or if I need to look into a GoFundMe or something so that I can pay out of my own pocket for Jay Cornell to attend these meetings. So I live there. I will continue the fight. I will continue to make sure this project is going to be done and executed properly, that it's not done in a piece and created a $10 million loop. Um, and I will make sure that the kids in the neighborhood are safe. Uh, and that will be through this committee or through some other means. So. I leave that with you. You guys can make a decision whether or not you would uh, you know, like to continue with the way things are or continue with us just having meetings without Jay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Ernie. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Ernie Reed. I've been on the committee for four, uh, three years. I live at 14 Wilbur Terrace. I just want to be very brief. I was, I'm a retired teacher with Middlesex County Vocational Schools and for four years my job was the faculty facilitator of a whole school reform program and the one thing that was drilled into my head more than anything else is if you're going to collect any data you better collect first-hand accurate data if you're going to make any decisions or recommendations which have any validity to them receiving packets of information without the ability to question the person who wrote the information it's just going to make our committee a very invalid uh, group of the borough and n not allow us to really do the job that we were assigned to do. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Does the council have any questions or comments for the bypass committee since they're here? Ooh. I'm in the company of very smart people. Okay. Uh, does anyone have any, on any subject, have any questions or comments? All right, then I'll take a motion to close the public portion. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, is there anything for closed session? No. Okay. Well, your government at work, folks. I'll take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This is one of the more disappointing meetings I've attended. Okay, thank you, everyone. Good night. Let me take a shot. Did you say Mary or Mayor? Okay. <laughs> hey, you know why I stuck around? Huh? You do know why? I stuck around? I missed a flight. Yeah. What?